Q-Day refers to the day when quantum computers become powerful enough to break current encryption methods. This would mean that many of today's security protocols that protect the internet, online banking, secure communication and other critical systems would suddenly become vulnerable. This day marks a potential turning point in cybersecurity as traditional cryptographic methods would become obsolete, leading to massive security gaps. While many experts believe that Q-Day is still far off, quantum computers already pose a serious threat today. I'll explain why in this video. Encryption allows secure communication over an insecure channel. But what is an insecure channel? Essentially, any channel where the enemy could be listening. For example, when you send a message via WhatsApp, Signal or Threema, it passes through several stations such as Meta's communication servers. All of these are insecure channels which can be protected through secure encryption. But how can the key be safely exchanged between communication partners? After all, the recipient must know the key to decrypt messages they receive and encrypt messages they send. This is known as the key exchange problem. How can it be solved? The sender can't simply send the key over the insecure channel. If the channel is intercepted, the attacker would have the key and could eavesdrop on the communication and even manipulate it as a man in the middle. A common solution is to encrypt the key of the symmetric method using an asymmetric method known as a hybrid encryption method. An asymmetric method is based on a key pair consisting of a public and a private key which are mathematically linked. The public keys are stored together on a key server. Let's clarify this with an example. Bob wants to send Alice a message. His message is encrypted directly on his device and can only be decrypted by Alice. The message is never unencrypted along the way. Each participant has a key pair consisting of a public and a private key. Before Bob can send the message, it is encrypted with Alice's public key. Then Bob sends the message to Alice. Once Alice receives the message, she, and only she, can decrypt it with her private key stored on her device. Throughout the journey from Bob to Alice, no one can decrypt the message because only Alice has the private key. If Alice wants to reply to Bob, her message is encrypted with Bob's public key. And then send on its way. Bob, and only Bob, can then decrypt Alice's reply with his private key. A well-known asymmetric encryption technique is the RSA algorithm, which appears in many contexts and protocols like TLS, SSH, various VPN protocols, IPsec, etc. RSA relies on the difficulty of factoring large numbers, which is computationally very challenging for classical computers. However, with the Shor algorithm, developed by Peter Shor, a quantum computer with a sufficient number of qubits can factorize large numbers into their prime factors. This includes numbers for which factoring with known algorithms on classical computers would be practically impossible within a reasonable time frame. If you are interested in the theory behind the RSA algorithm, feel free to check out my video on it. The link is in the video description down below. What you can see here is a quantum circuit, which is a mathematical description and a blueprint for implementation on a quantum computer. In my course on post-quantum cryptography, we'll discuss this quantum circuit in detail and even implement it on a real quantum computer. Shor's algorithm is so popular that it even made it into the serious Stargate universe, as seen in the following scene. Okay, who can tell me the significance of Shor's algorithm? Uh, it's a quantum algorithm used for integer factorization. It's important because it can, in theory, be used to break the widely used public key cryptography scheme known as RSA. RSA is based on the assumption that factoring large numbers is computationally infeasible. Uh, this assumption is valid for classical computers. No classical algorithm is known that can factor in polynomial time. Okay, even if the producers just quoted the Wikipedia article on this topic, this scene illustrates the core problem very well. Classical computers struggle with factoring large prime numbers, but with a quantum computer that has a sufficient number of qubits, factorization can be done much faster. 
so fast that we are no longer talking about centuries of computation time, but a much, much shorter period of time. Therefore, we need to start thinking about post-quantum algorithms now to protect ourselves from attackers with quantum computers. And we need to do this sooner rather than later, because with each passing day, our well-guarded secrets are increasingly at risk. How so? This is due to the attack vector known as Harvest Now, Decrypt Later. The Harvest Now, Decrypt Later attack, HNDL attack for short, is an already existing threat in the field of quantum cryptography and refers to a strategy where encrypted data is collected today, Harvest Now, and decrypted later once powerful quantum computers are available. The attack unfolds in three stages. Harvesting. The attacker collects and stores encrypted communication data today. These encryptions typically rely on asymmetric encryption methods like RSA. For instance, if a complete session, including the public key exchange, is recorded, we can decrypt it later by decrypting the RSA private keys. Storing. Since these methods are currently considered secure and can only be broken with extreme computational effort by classical computers, the collected data remains safe for now. However, the attacker stores all captured encrypted data in the hope of decrypting it later. Later decryption. Once powerful quantum computers become available, the attacker can decrypt the previously collected and stored encrypted data and access what were once thought to be secure secrets. If the 29 petabytes of data the NSA deals with daily, it wouldn't surprise me if some of this data is being stored for a future HNDL attack. So how can we protect ourselves today from the attacks of tomorrow? The answer is post-quantum cryptography, for which I'll be teaching a course in the winter semester of 2024-2025. Transitioning to post-quantum cryptography is a complex and resource-intensive process, but it's essential to ensure the long-term security of encrypted data. Organizations that pursue early adoption will find that open standards are not yet available, meaning they will have to invest heavily in developing their proprietary solutions. Transitioning to hybrid crypto systems that combine both classical and post-quantum secure algorithms could serve as a transitional solution until post-quantum secure algorithms are fully implemented. No one knows exactly when Q-Day will arrive. Perhaps certain organizations have already reached it and we simply don't know yet. On Q-Day, attackers might be able to decrypt data that was previously considered secure, which would have massive implications of internet security, the confidentiality of financial transactions, the protection of government and military communications, and much more. Therefore, Q-Day is correctly seen as a threat that we can only protect ourselves from by timely implementing quantum secure encryption methods. And that preferably yesterday rather than today. What's your opinion on the subject? Have you already looked into post-quantum cryptography? When do you think Q-Day will be? Feel free to write your answer in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.